This was an empty folder. My plan is to make five multiplayer party games and one web app to hold them all. I have 35 days left to make it happen, or my credibility is going to look sus. Last week we had one game, well, we have 30% of tic-tac-toe. It's got debug graphics. There's no X's and O's, it's just red and green, no sound effects. So that's maybe 30% done. But that's not the full story. We also started a second game called Flap Erase, which is already open source on the arcade GitHub, but we're redoing it in Calisius. But doesn't that seem like a bad idea in a time-limited challenge? Uh, isn't this also a game with client-side prediction? Yeah, so what's the reason to redo a more complex game? Maybe Making the logic there a little bit better. This could end up being bold or just reckless. For the week, here's what I'm hoping happens. We'll finish a basic working version where at least two people can connect and then play against each other. And then hopefully we can start working on the third game and possibly finish it. That is seriously optimistic for your track record so far. And I'll let you know what that game is when we get to it, hopefully in the next couple of days. Good, and hopefully there's less tequila and more working than last week. Let's get started since time is of the essence. So that was a few hours. Great, what do we have? Not too much. Okay, well, how's the client-side prediction going? The game is basically in lockstep right now. So there is no client-side prediction. So we're maybe 40% of the way there. Let's see what we can get done tomorrow. I'm back. Uh, you weren't gone that long. And I actually just had some breakfast. You've got some bacon, eggs, and this thing over here is liver. That's gross. It's very nutritious. Whatever floats your boat. I had already done a few hours of work here trying to figure out this client side prediction. I don't have it quite working perfectly yet. I'm trying to debug what's wrong. Looks like the bold versus reckless meter is leaning towards reckless. Some of the strategies that I use to help me do this is number one, draw all these debug rectangles. But having all this debug is not always enough. And when the game moves at 60 frames per second, trying to see what's going on is really hard. What can we do about that? What I do is I'll just slow it down to one frame per second and make sure that's working and then further bump up the frames per second and see where things break. How interesting. So that's kind of where I'm at right now so I'm gonna get back to it. So I still don't have the client side replay done. Looking more and more like a reckless decision. It's getting closer. You know, that almost doesn't count. What seems to be happening is the server is getting way behind the client. So the client is like 20, sometimes 100 frames ahead of the server. That definitely seems wrong. Now I didn't have this problem in Flappy Rays that's open source using Pathora because what I'm doing here is a little fancier, although possibly not needed. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Hubris. Now I did some checks and they are both running at roughly 60. The server seems to sometimes be doing 55 frames, 58 frames, 59 frames. Is it a CPU problem? Now I don't think the CPU is actually being taxed to run this very basic game loop. It just seems like the timer is only firing at close to 60, but not exactly 60. So what can we do about this? Force the server to run at 60 ticks a second. At least that's something to try. Tomorrow. Well, I did it, but it didn't come easy. The initial problem of the server being way behind the client was fixed, but then we had some more problems. In fact, two other issues. What were they? But first look at how nice this client side prediction is working. You trying to show off? But this is not how it looked when I initially fixed the server sync problem, which really only took a few minutes. And then the rest of the day was in solving these two other problems. All right, just spill it already. So the first one is when I notice this jump in the bird. So you tap to move and it moves and then it kind of comes back and then moves back up. That's not right. That definitely seems wrong. So how did you debug it? I started eliminating the client side prediction, removing the extra boxes that doesn't confuse me. I also used the debugger to check values as the game was running, what I really needed was just a stream of all the velocities. And while looking through the velocities, I noticed this guy. What is this sudden jump? Yeah, why is that there? I had a piece of code 
that was syncing the server's values on each patch back into the client. And so the client would basically move to a previous point in time. Great, so that's solved. And there was another one. You see here that the prediction rectangle should be exactly where the client is eventually. Yep, that makes sense. Now what we don't know is whether the bird is in the wrong place or the prediction is in the wrong place. The server is in the right place. That's the box with the black outline. So if we don't touch anything, the prediction box should be diagonal from where the server box is. Right, because the bird is falling and moving forward. Now you see that it's not. I take it you fixed it too. I fixed that. Great. Then next we'll move on to dead reckoning. I got Dead Reckoning working. That's awesome, but what does that actually mean? So when there's more than one person playing, the remote players are going to have prediction via doing the same thing you were doing before until the server comes back and tells you otherwise. Check out this Wikipedia article for more details. I've also added a Shift D to turn on and off this debug rectangles. What for? Now I haven't tried this on the real internet yet, so things may still not go well. Wait. What does that have to do with toggling debug boxes? That's why I have these debug rectangles toggleable so that we can see if anything goes wrong when playing for real. All right, what else we got? I've also added the end of game windscreen, a very basic one. This is probably not gonna be the final one. And I started playing the flying animation for the birds when the game starts. Those small things make a big difference. There's still more polish for this game, including sound effects, better UI, better fonts. But we're gonna do that later. For now, this is maybe 50% done. Now what I don't have yet is a deploy for this Flappy Race game. So I gotta do that so that I can actually try it on the real internet. started on a new game. Finally making real progress. But actually before that, I also moved the deployment for the Next.js web app to Vercel. Why? That seems like a waste of time. I was exporting the Next.js app and deploying those static files to Firebase Hosting. I'm using dynamic routes, so it didn't quite work in exported fashion. I think there probably is a way to do it, but instead of trying to figure that out, I just decided to use Vercel and it would just work. Okay, that does sound like a wise decision. What happened with Flappy Race? That is on Firebase Hosting along with Tic-Tac-Toe. So tell us what the third game is. And now our third game is a version of Simon Says. Who the hell is Simon? So how this game is gonna work is a bunch of people join, let's say two people, three people, four people. I pick red and then the next person, it could be you, you pick green, but you gotta first do red, then green. And then the next person has to do red, green, and they can add yellow. For simplicity, we're gonna start with just colors. That's a wise decision. You could have shapes. You could even have sounds. It could be any number of things, and I'm kind of designing it that way already. I guess considering future improvements is not a terrible idea. Now, I didn't get very far. Setting up projects always takes a little bit. There is a room on Calisius that I can connect to from a very bare bones phaser client. All games have to start somewhere. I'm using a lot of the tools that I've already built from the other games, so this should go faster, but we'll see. I actually didn't get too much done. Here we go again. What happened was yesterday I actually went to a concert for A.R. Rahman, popularly known for Slumdog Millionaire. He did the score. Was there tequila involved? Just that when you go to bed at three, you're not gonna really wake up at seven or six. At least you're not hungover. But nonetheless, I still did some stuff. What I have done so far is the first pass of the backend logic. It utilizes the state machine that I've used in Flappy Race, but my eyes are pretty tired. I think I only slept for six hours, just an amount, but I'm just tired from being up late at night. Isn't there some saying about sleep? Hours of sleep before 12 count more than those after 12 or something like that. Don't know why, but it does seem to be true. Some old sayings just have a lot of truth to them. Looks like someone's having a good day. Now today I had my chat with my brother that we do once a week that we didn't do last week, so usually once a week. And so we did try Flappy Race. Let's see if this works. It basically worked. It was lagging on his computer 
it looked like his internet was a little bit slow as well. So I'm sure we can work to kind of improve that. And actually it worked much better on his phone. Oh good, so Flappy Race worked largely as expected. That's great. Any progress on Simon Says? I was able to get some of the Simon Says front end working. I would guess that we can get most of the game done tomorrow and probably no more than the day after tomorrow. The big accomplishment this week was Flappy Race. And for next week, hopefully start on the next game, which is different than what we've done so far. And you'll find out what it is in the next video. Watch the next video to keep following along and subscribe for more of this series to make five multiplayer party games. We've got two games that are half finished and just 28 days left.